a rabbi, yeah. listen, I don't care how old I, I, I tell everybody. I'm telling you how old I am. I'm 78 years old. I'm not my Hello everyone, I'm Danny Darrow sitting in for Josie Ann Show. Once again, Persons of Interest coming to you from the MNN TV studios in New York City. We're on every other Tuesday night at 6 p.m. on Fios, ICN, and Time Warner Cable. So I do want to thank everyone out there for supporting us and watching the show. And you're going you're gonna to see a lot of wonderful, interesting shows coming up in the very near future. And today we are lucky enough to have uh, Rabbi Dr. Bernard Rosenberg, uh, who is a, a Jewish scholar and a speaker. He was an author of many, many, many books and was the Holocaust chairman of the New York Board of Rabbis. And also, he is a, he's, uh, he's won many awards, the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award and many, many others. And he's going to be talking to uh, everyone out there uh, regarding the Holocaust uh, uh, this evening. So please stay tuned and try to watch this. And, uh, and his mother and father, his family were all uh, in the Holocaust. Uh, he's a, a Holocaust survivor. And uh, uh, Rabbi Rosenberg, thank you so much for being here. We love you dearly. And uh, and uh, we want to get into the Holocaust, and we want to want to find out exactly what your memories are and everything else about the Holocaust. And you were born in Germany, by the way, also. My parents were from Poland. Yeah. And my parents yeah. were from Poland. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah from, yeah. If I'm minced, pinched, uh, on the Russian border. Right. Yeah, right. Tell us, tell us, I'm sorry. Get, get so it. anyway, they, they were uh, from towns about an hour and a half from Krakow. Okay. Which is the other side. Okay. Warsaw's on this side, Krakow's on this side. Okay. And uh, my father was in Auschwitz. My mother was in Sraszewsko, mm -hmm. uh, where they made bombs for the Germans. Uh, my mother, um, you look at the picture here, it's, it's my father, me, yeah. a baby, and my mother in Regensburg, Germany. Yeah. Uh, my mother, by the time she was 50, looked 80. Oh my. Because of uh, the horrible things she went through in the concentration camp. Yeah, okay. the, the lie from uh, making of these bombs uh, tore the, not only the dresses apart, but, but tore the, the skin apart oh. and made the skin turn yellow yeah. and wrinkled, oh, etc. Uh, my father, as I said, was an Auschwitz. Uh, and I was born in Regensburg, was a displaced persons camp. Okay. Uh, I decided to be a rabbi because of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, the never again concept. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I tell it the way I see it. It may not be the way other people see it. Uh, some people disagree with me, and which is fine. I don't care if they do or don't. People have walked out on me, mm -hmm. which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you my version. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a scholar, but I have my own version, and I tell the truth. Okay. Uh, my new book is called Echoes of the Holocaust. I recommend that you get it. Oh, yeah, you wrote many books, too. Oh, I have a whole list of books. But well, get this one. Okay. It's on Amazon. Yeah. It's about 700 pages. Mm -hmm. And as a teaching text, it is a number one. Yeah. And then I wrote uh, a number of other books, but one is called The Holocaust is Seen Through Form. Right. And these are for teachers. Yeah. You can actually teach just using these books, and, and, and I hope you will. Yeah. So I want you, uh, you're not a Holocaust scholar, but I want you to ask questions that you'd like to know about the Holocaust. And I'll try to give you the best answers that I can. Now, some of you people in the audience, especially Holocaust survivors, are not going to like my answers. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. And some of you uh, second-generation Holocaust survivors, people, like myself, you're not going to like my answers. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Uh, I'm on TV and you can't walk out on me. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. At least the truth the way I see it. Okay, now, what happened at the very beginning, uh, you know, when the when the Germans uh, got a hold of your family and got a hold of your, uh, your, uh, your family and put them in concentration camps? What happens from that time on? Okay. I, I spent most of my life trying to put the puzzle together. Yeah. My parents spoke about the Holocaust, but it was the same story over and over again. Uh, I never learned about my grandparents, uh, uh, so very little. The only picture I have is of my grandfather, uh, one of my grandfathers. Um, I don't have pictures of the rest of the family. Yeah. Uh, my mother, again, the same stories. I have no idea, except 
she had brothers and sisters. My father had brothers and sisters. Just, yeah. They were all murdered. Uh, were they all in the uh, in the same concentration camps? They, they were murdered some before the concentration camps. I wouldn't know, and they wouldn't know yeah. if they were murdered in the concentration yeah. camps. Yeah. My father was married before the war. Mm -hmm. which was very common among Holocaust survivors. They yeah. would have a second family after the war. Yeah. Um, my father's wife and his two children were murdered. Oh, my. And it was interesting, while growing up, this, this need to be involved in Holocaust education and become a rabbi because of never again was something just in me. Mm -hmm. And there was always this loneliness among the child. I could never figure out what this loneliness was. Mm -hmm. Like a missing part of me. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, I'm about eight, nine years old, and uh, in those days, the Greener, the Greener were the, the Europeans who came here. Uh, they didn't have green blood, but they, they were immigrants, the refugees. Mm -hmm. I, I was a refugee. Mm -hmm. So the big deal Saturday night was playing cards. Oh, big deal. Okay, my parents didn't play cards, but they slept me wherever they went. I'm an only child, no one had any money, there was no money for babysitters, they mm -hmm. slept me wherever. So I'm in one room and I'm uh, watching television, and I hear this conversation that my, my, my parents are having with someone that came from Israel, and it deals with uh, uh, another woman, and it deals with another family. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, here I'm like nine years old, I did want to believe it, I didn't want to believe it, I never asked. I never asked my parents if it was true or not. Mm -hmm. So later on in life, my all my children went on these tours of the uh, the camps, and uh, uh, Ayat, which is my youngest daughter, mm -hmm. uh, calls me at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, she says, "Daddy, hi, I'm in Auschwitz." Now, now you can imagine wow. the impact. Sure. I did not want to visit Auschwitz. I did not want to visit the camps of my own because I honestly thought I would lose my mind yeah. if I went there. Oh, how terrible! So. When she made that call, I decided well, it's time for me to go, and I went. And we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, after I came back from Auschwitz and the other camps, I called my cousin who was still alive. She was 90 years old. Mm -hmm. I said, "Listen, I don't know. You know, you're the only one who knows anything. Did I? Was my father married before the war? Yes. Did he have children? So I only heard one." in this long discussion. She told me there were two. Oh. But she didn't know the sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also found out, only by what she said, she saw my grandfather shot by the Nazis. Oh, my. Shot and picked up and thrown into a cart. Yeah, oh. And that's God. all I know. So I spent the rest of my life trying to put the puzzle together. And like many other people, we know nothing. We don't know about our grandparents, great-grandparents. We have no history. It's like we were just born with, with, with nothing there. So I was able to go back uh, hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's taken a long time. Uh, no one's alive, so you know, I can't communicate with anyone. But at least I have some last names. Uh, at least I know that uh, there, there was a background. Yeah. So, but I'm the, um, the oldest Rosenberg from my family alive. You know, there's there's ways on the internet that you can. Uh, well, I, I have an agency in Poland yeah. that was able to find because on the internet you, you actually don't find that much. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, I, I got some information from what uh, is called the tracing service of okay. people out there, uh, the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So you know, everyone thinks that the Germans kept these great records. No, they didn't. They kept great records in the bigger cities, not in the smaller cities. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting when I, I went back to Poland to the town where my uh, father was from, mm -hmm. uh, and by accident, uh, I found his birth certificate. There were only oh. certain volumes left, they were all written in, in hand. Oh, how wonderful. And they, I had an interpreter that I hired that, that, that drove us around from the United Nations, and uh, we found this book, and it tells me that uh, he was born, and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting, we, I, I read the book, and this is the horrible thing. It ends in 1942. Uh, it says that people were taken to the concentration camps mm -hmm. and people were dying right and left of, uh, of diseases. This was written by the doctor of that town. Which was not true. Yeah, they were dying of diseases. They were dying of diseases? Oh, yes, 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 yes. They were dying of diseases already in the town. Don't forget, they had next to nothing in food yeah, yeah. left. Uh, medicine was not being allowed in. The oh. Germans were in control. All right, okay. And it was interesting that the memos in this book were in Polish, Russian and German. 
Mm. And it's interesting to follow and uh, scary that all of a sudden I see a Hockenkreis, the Nazi swastika, yeah, yeah. At the, at, in, in 1942. Wow. The name of the town, if anyone might have had family there, was Voidislav. Yeah. Voidislav. Voidislav. Yeah. So I found uh, we had property there. Yeah. You know, it just came out the other day that someone in Warsaw was told they can't get their property back. But we own the pro the parking lot to the municipal building in Voidesdorf. Wow. Right. So I'll never get it back. But we had the paperwork and all that. And I went to the uh, lady from the town hall where I got the information from, which was very nice. Mm -hmm. She only spoke Polish. But she said, uh, you know, the mayor's busy. He can't meet with you. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not interested in getting my property back. I just want to know about my, my, uh, my father. But, but there's no way to get the property back. No. So then I uh, went to the next town. Mm -hmm. By the way, I found the, the big synagogue. It was collapsed. Mm -hmm. um, but they told me it wasn't collapsed from bombing. It just collapsed from old age. Mm -hmm. So then I went to my mother's town, Soniki which was about a half hour from Wojtyslaw. Mm -hmm. But supposedly my father and mother were cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, in that area, cousins married cousins. Uh, most of the people were related to each other somehow. Yeah, and the children came out normal? No, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you're normal. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, so I went to Salmiki, and the same thing, you know, we, uh, we have records. No. No? They were hidden right. No record at all of any Jew. And then I said, is there a synagogue anywhere near her? No. So we're driving with this fellow, and I see uh, the side of my eye, I see mm -hmm. a, a Jewish star. Mm -hmm. And I said, hold it. So he takes, does a U-turn. And by the way, in Poland, there's cows all over the place. A yeah. uh, cow almost ran over us, and we ran over our cow. Oh, well, yeah. And it says in Hebrew, Polish, and Yiddish, this is the synagogue where they put everyone in before they took them to the concentration camp. Oh, wow. And they said it didn't exist. Really? They said it didn't exist. Now, I go to Germany, and I'm looking for records. So I find basically the same thing I already had, but it was in the original handwriting. Mm -hmm. So I, I paid them, you know, whatever it took to fax it. But I said to them in German, you know, I lost my entire family. I, I just give me copies. They charged me a mint. What really bothered me is there wasn't even a, a, a bit of sympathy yeah. from these people that I had lost my whole family. Not even a bit of sympathy. So, and, and it was interesting, though, the rabbi of Regensburg was very nice, invited us for a meal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said he never leaves the shul. Uh, yeah. And if he has to do a funeral, they pick him up and take him. Okay? How did I feel in Germany? Uh, was I frightened? No. Uh, there's a lot of Israelis in Germany today. Oh. A lot of Muslims, by the way. Okay. But uh, from the older people, I could see they just stare at you. And uh, I just on purpose, I wore my yarmulke. I never took my yarmulke off. Right, yeah. Both in Poland yeah. and in Germany. Right, and, and, and how do the people uh, live? They live uh, very friendly together? Or is there any... Uh, uh, in Germany? Yeah. Well, Germany now is, is because of America, and they lost the war. Yeah, you know, we rebuilt it. Russia. We rebuilt it. Yeah, yeah. So Berlin is completely rebuilt, and uh, it's basically Russia, a lot of Russian Jews. Yeah. And uh, Poland is, is having some type of resurgence as far as identity. People are finding out for the first time that they're Jewish. Um, people hid their Jewish identity. And what happened was, they, they would sneak in, let's say, furniture, mm -hmm. a note, a kithel, that would say either pasted in the back or inside, uh, uh, I want you to know a secret, I am Jewish. Really? And the grandchildren would f have found these little notes, Yeah. and they, they started like a, 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 a Hebrew school, a yeshiva, yeah. in Poland, and there is kosher now, yeah. and actually Putin's been very good to the Jews. Isn't that interesting? So it's very interesting. And yeah. in Poland, the same thing. People are finding out that they're Jewish yeah. when they were told they weren't. They were told they, uh, they were Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they saved their lives. They saved their lives. Sure. So it's, it's just interesting how even these people who were frightened to let them know they were Jewish wanted to make sure they knew. Mm -hmm. And so they had the, these inscriptions that would let them know they were Jewish. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, very interesting. Absolutely now, interesting. can the Holocaust happen again? Yes, it can. Yeah. And people tell me, oh, no. First of all, let's understand what a Holocaust is. Okay. A Holocaust is not a genocide. 
Mm -hmm. okay, hey, there was a guy by the name of Lackey who invented the word genocide. Mm -hmm. Genocide basically means the destruction of a people, but it doesn't have to be the complete destruction of the, of the people. You can leave a few alive. Mm -hmm. The Holocaust was, according to Hitler, by the way, Holocaust is a Greek term. Shoah is the Hebrew term. Right. It was a complete burning. Hitler wanted to destroy every Jew everywhere in the world. And he wanted to make museums to let, like with the Indians, to let people know that they once existed. Yeah. That he wanted to have them all destroyed. Yeah. Well, the well, the Hitler sign is the swastika. Yes. And the Indian sign is yes. the reverse. So now, the, what is the reason? Do you do you, do you do you know the reason that the Hitler wanted to kill all these Jews, basically? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's work backwards. The the, the swastika, uh, the Indian swastika, was a good luck uh, symbol. Good luck symbol, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the the swastika uh, is it, supposed to be a wheel, the continuation of progress. Mm -hmm. And some people think um, that um, uh, today, when they see swastikas, they think they're anti-Semitic. When in reality, they're they're Indian. And it goes all the way back. And by the way, this business of tattooing people, you know, yeah. is not just German orientated. It was uh, during the slavery, way, way back. People were tattooed. So this is nothing new. Slavery. Wow. Okay. Okay. There's nothing new at all about uh, the Holocaust except for the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there were more than six million, by the way. We're finding that out today. Okay. And the way it was done, the way it was done, mm -hmm. uh, because there was a mass. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, genocide or genocide in the Holocaust is the Holocaust. People talk about the Black Holocaust. There is no Black Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about Black slavery? Okay. You want to talk about a Black genocide? Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not the Holocaust. So the Holocaust, in my opinion, can happen again. God forbid, mm -hmm. a few hydrogen bombs into Israel. Goodbye, yeah. Charlie. There's the Holocaust, yeah. and the rest of the world already. Uh, especially in Europe, anti-Semitism is growing unbelievably, yeah. and uh, I have great fears. Yeah, well, the thing is that um, uh, there were rumors, I don't know if it's true or not, where uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the administration uh, allegedly sold uh, uh, Libya, I think it was 20% uh, of our uranium, mm -hmm. and they passed it over to Russia, and uh, Russia owns 20% of the uranium uh, in the entire world. And of course, that went into the uh, allegedly went into the Clinton Foundation, all the money, and then of course, uh, allegedly went into Obama, one million two hundred thousand in Obama's uh, foundation. But uh, you know, you, I don't know what people have to believe that. Mm -hmm. So it may have happened, it may have not happened, but uh, I believe it happened. So uh, 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 if there is a uh, another Holocaust, I hope it never happens. And uh, maybe that's the reason that the Trump is uh, is uh, trying to protect the world by uh, by being friendly with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Putin. Well, we did a show earlier about Trump, yeah, so yeah. people can view that. So one of the other questions you need to ask: Why didn't people get out of there? Okay. Well, I mean, in, 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 up until 1938, especially in Germany, there was, was a chance of getting out of there. And the answer is very simple: They never thought that um, Hitler would uh, stay in power. Mm -hmm. uh, Anti-Semitism in Europe was happening all the time. Mm -hmm. You had pogroms. You had crazy people that came into being that killed Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of thousands of Jews at a time. Mm -hmm. It was nothing new. So they felt, okay, we'll live through this like we've lived through other ones, and we're not leaving. All right. So they didn't leave. Some people did leave. Yeah. Okay. Call it luck. Call it whatever you want. But they had the money. They left. In Europe, in Poland, mm -hmm. most people had no clue what was happening. Yeah. They remembered the Germans of World War One, and the Germans of World War One, the army, was different than the army of World War Two. They weren't as insane. Um, as far as dealing with with human beings, they found out differently in a, in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, got, now Hitler was a painter. He was an artist. Now, um, can you go back to the question I asked you the last time? Is you know, uh, you know, what what really uh, you know speared him on uh, to kill all the Jews to to direct his uh, his uh, you know mm -hmm. the Jews as the targets. Yeah, all one has to do is read Mein Kampf. It's all in there. Yeah, it's all in there, right? I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sure a lot of people haven't read it. it it's but, they just 
made it new in Germany and it just came out again, but it's also in English. People always ask me, did, did Hitler really want to kill the Jews? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, you know, take a look at Mein Kampf. It's there. Yeah, okay. It's in black and white. Yeah. So, yes, at the beginning, he, he was not going to murder six million. That's true. Yeah. Okay. And yes, he offered to sell them, and 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 people know all these histories. But at the end, uh, he made up his mind that he wanted to kill every Jew in the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, they tried to find methods of killing them faster and in mass production, and that's what they uh, were doing. Uh, the biggest problem was the rest of the world was silent. That's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Hitler gets into office in 1933 as the chancellor, mm -hmm. and everyone could see what was happening. You have Kristallnacht in 1938. Yes. The world does nothing. The New York Times, uh, I have uh, chapters in some of my books talking about how the New York Times on page 320, you know, hidden way in a corner mm -hmm. that two million Jews are dead. Wow. Okay? No one's talking about it. Roosevelt does nothing. Roosevelt wants to win the war. Roosevelt doesn't care about the Jews. I don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. used to say, how can you say such a thing? Roosevelt would say he loved the Jews. Well, maybe because they didn't know what Roosevelt did not do. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about saving Jewish lives. Mm -hmm. In the 40s, anti-Semitism in America was huge. It was huge. You had uh, Catholic priests uh, on TV mm -hmm. saying the most horrible thing about the Jews. You, you had uh, shows uh, around Easter saying uh, the most horrible things here in America, coming out of pulpits. Mm -hmm. Horrible, horrible. But, and 50% of the American population was really anti-Semitic. But they just weren't overtly. They didn't hang Jews. Okay? Yeah. So, um, uh, the Holocaust experience, which I want to talk about a little bit, uh, the, the second generation, my generation, uh, a lot of us are, became what we are because of the Holocaust. Um, I need to help people. I need to save people. So you have doctors, you have lawyers, you have social workers, you have teachers. A lot of Jews went into these helping professions. Uh, baggage, we all have baggage. Mm -hmm. Some of us have more, some of us have less. Do I have baggage? Yes, I do. Do I have nightmares? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Do sometimes I, I, I taught Holocaust studies for 12 years, and my uh, specialty was Holocaust is seen through film, which is one of my books. So I would see these films over and over and over again, and actually wake up in, 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 in feeling that I was in the gas chamber. Uh, a lot of these things happen to the second generation. Uh, what I'm worried about is that unless we teach the third generation about the Holocaust, that uh, the memory of the Holocaust will be lost. Mm -hmm. Now, all these museums, all these uh, wonderful endowments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all these books, including mine, mm -hmm. uh, will mean nothing. It will mean nothing. I predict that 50 years from the time of the last Holocaust survivor, mm -hmm. which includes my generation, mm -hmm. uh, the Holocaust will be nothing more than a date in history. Unless, and I've already started doing this, we incorporate Holocaust into our liturgy. Mm -hmm. So, for Tisha B'Av, for example, uh, in my book, Echoes of the Holocaust, I have readings that you can use for Tisha B'Av, mm -hmm. uh, and you incorporate them into the service. Mm -hmm. As long as they are incorporated into the religious service, then the memories of the Holocaust will continue. I am deeply afraid, if not, we're going to uh, lose the memory of the Holocaust. Even today, when you go into all the museums, you know, they spent millions and millions of dollars on these museums, uh, it's now become not only Holocaust, but genocide. And it's becoming more and more genocide, mm. to the point that I'm afraid someday it'll be genocide with a little bit of Holocaust. And that's my fear. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of factions out there that are saying, uh, you know, uh, that the, the holo there was never a Holocaust. Yeah, well, I mean, why is that? I don't, I don't seem to understand. There that. are <coughs> Holocaust deniers. There are neo-Nazis, there are mm -hmm. white supremacists. There are people who think that all the Jews are in Miami. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> there are people who think that all my relatives that I can't find somehow or another took some type of pleasure trip and got lost. Yeah. Uh, I, I know there's a Holocaust, where are my relatives? I mean, they're not here, right? Yeah. Um, I know there was a Holocaust. Uh, with, uh, with the number six million, they're finding out there was more than six million. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Does it really matter? Six million, seven million, eight million? Where's my family? Yeah. You see? And most of us Holocaust 
two Jews have named our children. Uh, and our parents named their children after the Holocaust people that, that died, especially in the Ashkenazim. Mm -hmm. So all my children have Holocaust names. Yeah, that's a set, the, uh, the Ashkenazi, because yes. that one is Israeli. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Sfordim don't, don't you know, uh, actually can name after themselves. Yeah. But we name after the dead. Yeah. And all my children and grandchildren are named after Holocaust the people that have died or after my parents yeah. are, are no longer uh, with us. But, you know, I just plead to the audience, teach your children about the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And teach them about the importance of Jewish identity. Mm -hmm. And more important, please, teach them about the importance of Israel. Yeah. Uh, in the 60s and 70s, we used to go to rallies. Quarter of a million of us were out there, you know, protesting against uh, the Palestinians and protesting for Israel. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. You have so many Jews, unfortunately, that are pro-Palestinian. You have rabbis that are pro-Palestinian. Mm -hmm. You have professors and rabbis on campuses teaching uh, the hatred of Israel. Uh, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. So I, I beg you. And, and finally, it's hard to say this, but intermarriage, something that people don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Rabbis don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I love everyone. I make no distinction between uh, a Jew and a non-Jew. I just don't. It's not in my uh, mm -hmm. ability. Mm -hmm. I love everyone. We're God's children. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to intermarry, at least convert your children. And if you at least send them to Hebrew school, yeah. teach them about your faith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Doctor, how, how can we uh, see some of these books that you've written? Well, they're on uh, Amazon. Yeah, I've yeah. got two of them, Echoes of the Holocaust and the Holocaust is seen through film. Yeah. Uh, the other ones are, if you go online, you'll find them. Uh, a classic is called Theological and Halakhic Reflections of the Holocaust. Yeah. It deals with the theology of God, was God involved or not. And then there's another one called Contemplating the Holocaust. Because there's so many of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What do you got? About 12, uh, yes. 12 books that you wrote. Yes. So just, uh, if you go to my uh, site, BernardRosenberg.com, yeah. they're all listed. All right, so just tell everyone, once again, the site is where? BernardRosenberg.com on Facebook. BernardRosenberg.com. Yeah, on the internet. Yeah. And I have YouTubes that are available yeah. that, on the Holocaust that you can uh, yeah. listen to. Yeah. Do you have any favorites, uh, a favorite out of all these books? Echoes of the Holocaust. Echoes of the Holocaust. best work, I think. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that'd be wonderful. My God, there's so many books. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for watching Georgie and Show, Persons of Interest, coming to you from the Eminem TV studios in New York City. And don't forget that we're on every other Tuesday night on Fios, RCN, and Time Warner Cable. So, and I want to thank uh, uh, Rabbi Dr. Rosenberg for, for, for being on uh, Josie Ann's show. And we're going to be uh, back, uh, uh, you know, again uh, with many, many different shows. And uh, uh, Josie Ann, thank you so much for being in the control room. And she's doing all the sound work and she does all the camera work and she does everything. And all I do is sit here and just warm up the seat and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and be with Dr. Uh, Rosenberg. Thank you. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we send you lots of love and kisses and hugs and, and all that good, that wonderful stuff out there. We want to thank you very much for supporting Georgie and Show Persons of Interest. And uh, we're going to see you uh, again very, very soon. So thanks very much for watching, and uh, please stay tuned. Thank you. And we did, we did it. it. We, we did, did it. it. Wow. We delivered a baby. We delivered a baby. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>